Hi everyone, today in maths we're going to be continuing on with our fractions topic and today we're going to be focusing on finding a quarter of a shape. So let's have a look then at our learning intention grid. Today we are learning to find a quarter of a shape. We will be learning this through this PowerPoint, through a YouTube video that I'm going to post, through some games on the website called Snappy Maths and through completing some worksheets as well, which will allow you the chance to apply your knowledge that you find out in this PowerPoint onto an independent task. Right, why are you learning this? Well, you want to be a successful learner who can accurately identify shapes which are split into quarters. You want to be confident individuals who can apply this knowledge in real life situations. For example, asking, can I have a quarter of a cookie? or if you need to split a cookie into quarters for yourself and three friends to share. You also want to be responsible citizens who think back to your knowledge of dividing by four and apply this to finding a quarter so you already have some prior knowledge that you can use here. So how will you know that you've been successful? Well, you need to understand that splitting a shape into quarters means splitting it into four equal parts and as we know from last week, that word equal is really important in fractions because all of the parts must be the same size. To find a quarter of a shape, you can half a shape and half it again. You need to remember that the denominator, so that's a number on the bottom of the fraction. And you have to remember that that tells us how many parts a whole is split into. And remember that the numerator tells us how many of these parts we are referring to and we'll go over that again boys and girls throughout this powerpoint. So let's think back then to our prior knowledge, what do we all already know? It's so important before we learn something new that we think back to our knowledge and our skills that we already have. So we should know that when we split a whole into two equal parts that we call these two equal parts halves and we should know that a half is written like this where the denominator is two, because it's telling us that we split a whole into two parts, and the numerator is one, because we're speaking about one of these halves. Right, so let's recap again then, just to make sure we're secure in this knowledge. What exactly is a half? Well, if we had a whole pizza, and we cut it into two halves, then each piece would be the exact same size. And we can see that here, one of those halves is referred to as one half. So if you know what a half of a shape is then, well, what is a quarter? Well, here we have the two halves again of a pizza. Oh, and if you cut the two halves in half, the pizza has been cut into four quarters. And each piece is the same size. A quarter is one of four equal parts. So this pizza has been split into one, two, three, four quarters, and one quarter is just one of those four equal parts. And here we go, we've got a picture of one quarter of the pizza. So how do we go about then finding a quarter? Well, let's actually look at how this is written. We know the number on top is the numerator and the number on the bottom is the denominator. The denominator is four, which tells us we need to split a shape into four equal parts. And the numerator is one, which means we're referring to just one of these parts. So let's have a look then at finding a quarter. So a quarter of this cake is missing. Can we find a quarter? Well, here it is, here, here is a missing quarter. The four quarters make a whole cake. A quarter of this biscuit is missing. Can we find a quarter? There we go. And now eight, we have a whole cookie and each of these quarters is the same size. A quarter of the chocolate is missing. Can you find a quarter? Because we're not always looking at circles. We can find quarters of rectangles and other shapes as well. Is it going to be this one then? That's a quarter of a circle. No. Not that one either. Ah, uh, must be this one. The four quarters of the chocolate are equal. 
And I've got a quarter of the pizza missing. So A is 8, here is the other quarter. And you can see that the four quarters make a whole. And I've got a good question here to think about. How many people can share the pizza when it is in quarters? Hmm. Well, if it's split into four parts, then four people can share this pizza. They can each have one equal part each. Right, quarter of his pie is missing. Here it is. And now we're going to have a look at this in more abstract shapes, okay? This is more along the lines of what your task is going to be like today. So we can see that four quarters make a whole. We've got one, two, three, four. And when those four quarters join together, they make a whole. Now, it's not always just done with a line in the middle and a line like this. You can still have quarters when a shape is cut through diagonally as long as each of the pieces are the same shape and size. You can see here an example with a square when it's been split into quarters as well. And this one has a line down the middle and a line horizontally. But you can also make quarters again with diagonal lines on a square. And these four quarters again make a whole. Here's an example with a rectangle where this rectangle, you can almost imagine it being halved with this line in the middle, but then it's been halved again and it's making four quarters. So this whole rectangle has been split into four quarters. We have one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. And you can see that again here, it's just been split horizontally instead. And here we have another rectangle where it's been split diagonally. So hopefully, boys and girls, you are seeing that you can make quarters in different ways as long as the pieces are the same size. And here we have another one that's really shown us now that two quarters is the same as a half. So here we've got one, two quarters, and you can see, well, that's the same size as a half. So a half is actually the same as two quarters, and you may have already known that. And you can see here again, it's just another example where it's shown us it on a square as well, and a rectangle that two quarters is equal to one half. Now, you can also see here that we've got three quarters, and this time, the numerator, the number that's on the top, is three. Okay, so we've got one, two, three quarters, we're talking about three of these equal parts here. And you can see the one quarter is shaded a different colour. And you can see that again here with a square, we've got one, two, three quarters, and one quarter that's a different colour. And boys and girls, I'm just going to write this here because the three quarters here is written slightly differently. So you would have three as your numerator and four as your denominator when you're talking about three waters okay so i hope that that's been useful you learn to think a quarter of a shape i hope you now understand that splitting a shape into quarters means splitting it into four equal parts i hope you understand that to find a quarter you can half it and half it again and i hope you remember the role of the denominator and the numerator okay so you've got a couple of worksheets to do today just let me know if you need any help. Please traffic light your work down the bottom to let me know how you get on. Remember that a red for when you find it tricky. A yellow is for if you think you need some practice, but you're getting it. A green means that you're good to go and you're feeling confident with this task. Okay, boys and girls, so good luck with your task and bye for now.